heard Pat's going to sing and dance. <laughs> Everybody would leave. <clears throat> Are we good, Shane? We're all good. Everyone's in from the waiting room, and we are recording, so we're good to go. Okay, so being 6.30 on Wednesday, September 7th, 2022, and having quorum, I'll open the uh, planning board meeting for this evening. Um, call out the order, item one. Uh, item two, we have a, a – so after I'll call out the order, I still read the um, town manager request to um, – meet remotely and limit the number of people that may gather in one place. The Bridgewater Planning Board will be conducted via remote participation for the greatest extent possible. No in-person attendance of the members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access proceedings in real time. This meeting is being recorded and will post it within 48 hours on the town's website and on the town's social media pages. The following members of the Bridgewater Planning Board are participating remotely. I'm Patrick Fiscal, the chair, Mr. Raymond Benjamin, Ms. Ashton Rojas, Mr. Michael McDonald, the vice chair, and Mr. Stephen Geller. We have two associates um, participating or attending the meeting this evening, uh, MJ Spagon and Mr. Ted Haley. Um, what should I call you, Edward? Right? I'm sorry. It's going to work just fine. <laughs> All right. Um, during this, during this meeting, all votes will be taken to roll calls. The following Bridgewater Town staff will be participating remotely as well. Mr. Shane O'Brien, the, the uh, Town of Bridgewater Planner. Um, and that's it for staff, Shane, correct, this evening? Yeah, just me. At this point, everyone's mics uh, will be, uh, at this time, everyone's mic is muted. The board's mics will be unmuted through the whole meeting. As items appear on the agenda, the project's representative mics will be unmuted. If the project is still a public hearing and allows for public comment, we ask that you use the chat feature to ask your question by listing your name and address in your question. The host, was Mr. O'Brien, will recognize the questions in order. You can use the raise my hand feature in the participant menu and you'll be unmuted when the chat and the host recognize you. Again, please keep your name and address before asking a question. If you're on the phone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. So Mr. O'Brien, you and I should probably connect and I'm still going off the, the form from March 12, 2020, I'll dabble up in some of it because now it's the town manager's order. Mm -hmm. So maybe you want to clean this up. Yeah, and uh, we can add the uh, additional language on uh, the Governor Baker's extension of it as well, because uh, I believe the allowance for these remote meetings are extended until, I believe, sometime next year. Um, but yeah, we can we can modify the language for that. So it's I'll, I'll email you what I have just because I, I say that to myself every meeting and then I don't connect with you. So just I, I'll send it over to you. Sure thing. I'll have so that in my notes. I'm, I'm, del I'm deleting some stuff and skipping over it as I'm reading it because it doesn't apply anymore. And I just sure. maybe just so it's clean the next time. So. All right. So um, the first uh, item after call to order item two is public hearing. This is 210 Broad Street. I'm presented by 210 Broad Street Realty LLC. This is a site plan and a special permit. This was continued from August 3rd and, and the August 17th meeting. Uh, apparently, the applicant has submitted a continuation request to September 21st, 2022. Um, are there any representatives here that want to discuss it, or, or should we just take a vote to continue it? Um, I don't believe uh, there's any representatives here for this. Uh, I received a letter uh, August 31st um, from Eric Diaz um, asking for 210 Broad Street that the public hearing be extended to um, scheduled to the next meeting, uh, which will be September 21st. Uh, I will note that Eric and, and I had a conversation where he is um, still working on some updates to the plans. Uh, he had a question about some access issues and potential changes um, to a parking layout um, with an abutting property. So um, I don't wanna to speak too much on it because it's still a continuing conversation, but um, I, I have been in contact with Mr. Diaz uh, on their pro their progress on their project. All right, great. And I, I see in our packet, the letter from Strong Point dated August 31st, 2022. So if somebody's willing to make a motion, if there's no further discussion. 
Yeah, I'll make a motion to continue it to, uh, I'm sorry, what was the date? September 21st. 20, 21st at 6.30. Do we have a second? Second. By Mr. Geller. So motion by Mr. McDonald, second by Mr. Geller. Any discussion? Mr. Geller? Yes. Mr. Ajemian? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Ms. Rojas? Yes. Um, yes. All right, thank you. All right, so going back to the agenda, item three, we have an A and I for 681 Plymouth Street. Um, is the applicant or the engineer here to discuss this? Uh, I believe we have the applicant here. I will allow them to unmute and go from there. Oh, I think you're... Um, I <clears throat> we're just looking to move. Sir, I, just so we know who you are for the record. I'm sorry. You your name uh, and address, please. Um, my name is David Hartree, and my wife is Laurel Hartree. We live at actually 673 Plymouth Street. Uh, Laurel is the executor uh, of the trust that owns 699 Plymouth Street. Her father used to live in 681 Plymouth Street. He passed away. Our daughter bought the property. The Quonset Hut actually is part of 699 Plymouth Street, which is owned by the family trust. Um, we want to move the property line so that it becomes part of 681. There's quite a bit of uh, family tools, equipment, things in the Quonset hut, and we just want it to stay in the family, which is 681 Plymouth Street. Um, our only concern was that the, the distance between the two is only 20 feet, and that's cutting it 10 feet on each side. Um, we didn't think we needed a variance because they're existing buildings. I'm not sure what's going on there, but we're not looking to do anything except for move a property line to incorporate that into um, 681 Plymouth Street from 699 Plymouth. There's plenty of area still at 699 Plymouth Street. And uh, it's basically a solving a family legacy kind of thing. Jan, could you, could you, where is the, um, just looking at frontage area or access, things of that nature. So the lot that this is being removed from, I guess, right? So the dotted line represents the existing property line? That is correct. It's, a, it's an odd shaped lot to begin with where it has this kind of jagged shape to it. So <clears throat> lot one will remain at 23,000 square feet. What is the total square footage of this map 36 lot 37 now I, I assume it makes meets the square footage requirements correct uh it does so it'd be whatever its current square footage is i would say it'd be more than twenty three thousand, with additionally that seven thousand added on to it so i and i asked you this earlier today we've never signed a, it's i mean i i've never voted for it even though i understand what they're trying to do and but how do we're creating two lots with two non-conforming buildings now? I would say that essentially this property is coming before the board that's potentially creating two non-conforming lots or making both of these lots more potentially non-conforming. Well, not um, non-conforming lots, but non-conforming structures. Correct. Non-conforming to our current zoning or residential C. Um, however, I, I would argue that the, the purview of the board is not to view this as from a zoning perspective. It's essentially looking at it from a perspective of, of an approval not required plan. Um, the applicant does state on their plans that endorsement of this plan by the board 
doesn't constitute the opinion of the board in terms of uh, the zoning bylaws and ordinances. Ultimately, that comes down to uh, our zoning enforcement officer or the building inspector. Um, so endorsement wouldn't prevent this property from being non-conforming or having a zoning enforcement issue. Um, I will say that uh, Steve Solari, uh, the building inspector, did look at this plan and had some concerns, um, especially being that the garage and the Quonset hub are now going to be essentially less than that 20 feet that's required for side setbacks. So um, yeah, because typically, like, typically we'd have those buildings say to be raised. Right? Sure. Uh, I, I historically, I, I can't speak of what the board has done in the past, um, but I, I can say based on my professional opinion that looking at this property from a zoning perspective, the only thing that we should be looking at is frontage um, and anything else that doesn't conform to our zoning bylaws or ordinances shouldn't be in the purview of the board at this time. Well, how, how can we just look at frontage when area matters, when setbacks matter? I mean, we can't. That it's based on mass general law for approvals not required. Um, I can I can send over and you know talk about the 1980 case of uh, let me let me look it up. Quick. But but I guess I guess so. So now we let's say we approve this, right? How how does the building inspector follow up on this to make sure they either get a variance or tear the buildings down? Well, I would I would note I would say that I can make it a condition of this approval that the building inspector is notified of said. Uh, but we can't. But we report. can't condition an A and R. Well, I can. I can alert the building inspector of this A um, and R endorsement. I, I'm just not comfortable creating two non. I mean, we're creating two non-conforming structures. It's but they, the lot. Everything conforms now. And we're changing a lot line to create two non-conforming structures. My screen sharing. What if we change the lot line to only create one non conforming structure? Uh, I don't, I mean, I don't, I think we'd really need the building. I mean, it's uh, and uh, board questions. I mean, I don't want to be the only one to speak. So, so, so Shannon, is this really, you're saying it doesn't need our approval? No, we need to, the board needs to endorse it. Um, you know, in some cases, I, I, I would recommend that the board endorse it based on the, it meets our requirements for an approval not required plan. Um, you know, it's not the board's jurisdiction to look at this from a zoning perspective. Um, there just has to, if, if on the plan, it states the intent of the plans for lot one to transfer parcel A to the adjacent lot 37, I'm, that's fine, and both properties are have, have frontage on it. Um, I know they provide setbacks on the plans, but it's really not the board's purview to, to make zoning determinations through uh, approval not required plans. And the and I'm comfortable with it as well as the plan states that the endorsement of the plan does not constitute the board's opinion on anything zoning for the town. I understand the board's issue. There may be issues in terms of the board endorsing something that becomes non-conforming. However, that's kind of the jurisdiction of the the building inspector and the applicant for their the applicant and their engineer slash surveyor to do their due diligence on these matters. If I so, may, uh, uh, Shane, if uh, Pat, if you if you don't mind. Um, if, if we endorse this, we then put the building inspector in a bind, don't we, do we not? Because if uh, he says it's non-conforming, then he's gonna have to re require that one or both buildings be torn down, correct? Sure, but it, denying this sets up a, I would say a potential legal battle where the board would, potential legal battle where the board and historically speaking, a and plans that that boards have not endorsed that show zoning violations have been overturned. So that's my next question, Mr. Jimmy. I don't mean to interrupt you. I'll start with that. Do you have another question? Go ahead. So, so, so this would be so this would be up to the building inspector 
to tell the applicant that they either must go to the zoning board of appeals to keep the two buildings or tear them down. Right. And they're creating their own. They'd be creating their own hardship, <clears throat> correct. If they were cut to come into the zoning board with this plan. So Shane, I I would vote I mean, I would vote against it the way it is. Sure. Just because I, I feel we're putting the building inspector, the applicant, everybody in a bad spot. Does it make sense to see if the applicant would be willing to grant us an extension until next week to, to our next meeting and have Jason Rollins give an opinion, our attorney? Um, if that's up the board's purview, what I'm telling you right now would probably be the same thing that Jason would be telling you. Um, he would probably say that it states on the plan that it doesn't constitute anything or an endorsement of our zoning bylaws. And I would say that um, that would be probably similar. Um, I'm trying to figure out a solution if, if the board has a solution in terms of potential issues. I think regardless, you're seeing if this Quonset hut's being transferred to the adjacent property, you're seeing an, uh, an issue with the garage being less than 20 feet anyways. So I, I, I try to figure out in my head what would create a solution to this where the that parcel A property is transferred to lot 37, not requiring a variance. Yeah. Nor, the, nor, nor an ANR plan through the board. Well, they have to move the cost. Yeah, which would be, uh, I would say, a, a task. Excuse me. If <clears throat> for any reason the um, building departments in one of the buildings hadn't come down, we would leave leave it like it is. It, you know, leave it with six ninety nine, because um, that's not an option. So do we want to get an opinion what Mr. Solari would want if we approve this and talk to Mr. Roll, Attorney Rollins about it before we do anything? I just, I'm, I'm uncomfortable putting the applicant and the building inspector in this position and creating two hardships by approving an A&I. I agree. I would uh, prefer to have uh, Jason uh, give us an opinion. I didn't, um, I'm, I'm Shane is probably exactly right, but I think that um, we need an outside opinion here. Oh, don't get me wrong. If 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 what I if what I just heard, right? If we approve this or endorse or endorse it, and the building inspector comes back and says you have to tear down both buildings. The applicant is telling me that that's not doable. They're not going to do it. They're just going to leave everything the way it is because they're correct. not going to take it down. Is that correct? Correct. I just heard. Correct. <clears throat> this is family-owned property, and um, the middle garage has a lot of equipment in it, a lot of personal things. <clears throat> the wooden garage is obviously part of six ninety-nine. It's at the end of their driveway. The metal garage is a little further away, but as you can see from the plans, they, they obviously that would do it. The variances, if we need them, we need them. We can, I, I have a set of plans, variance plans, because the engineer gave us those first. And then we were under the impression we didn't need them because they were existing buildings. And we weren't, we're not gonna build, we're not gonna do anything with them. We're just moving a property line to, if we all drop dead, my daughter still has the quantity. It doesn't go with the rest of the property and the trust. So right, so right now, Shane, the properties uh, conform to everything, right, as existing? Uh, I would believe so. I don't have a – everything – I don't believe there's any zoning violations at this time on that lot one, uh, 699. But if we were to endorse this right now, we'd be creating – and non two non-conforming. Well, the board wouldn't be creating any issue. They would be endorsing this plan, and the whoever would be in the applicant would be creating these uh, zoning violations. <clears throat> and so I'm reading what you had sent us earlier today, Shane. So I I understand that it says the above the above endorsement is 
is not a determination of conformance with zoning regulations. That's correct. No, no determination of compliance with zoning has been made. Mm -hmm. But after this, in order to keep those buildings, in order to continue, they, they need to tear them down and get a variance. Um, like I said, I can't, I can't make that determination for the zoning enforcement officer uh, or the building inspector. Um, you know, he, he is... He, he looked at the plans and had concerns about the 10.2 uh, foot setbacks where the requirements are. Yeah, yeah that's, that's my concern too. So, but like I said, there's no, there's no issue with the board endorsing this plan. Um, I would say that I am th there law um, allows the board to endorse this plan and is more favorable for the board endorsing this plan rather than not endorsing it. So I'm 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 fine with the board giving it more time and getting to a point where we feel comfortable for an endorsement. But well, um, we, we have a we have a time limitation on this, correct? Of how many days? Correct, but we can we can ask for a time freeze um, from the applicant. Correct. So, sir, would you be willing to allow us, uh, you know, uh, some time to get? the right answer so we make the right decision so it doesn't put you in a bind or us in a bind? Of course. We want to we want to do this right in the long run. Of course. Yeah. Do we need anything in writing or is just this recording all right from the applicant? Um, I'll I'll um talk to Mr. Hartley. I will have I'll come up with a sign that we, we're continuing this to the next meeting. Um so I'll I'll talk to David. Yeah, if we, could just, if, we, if we, you know, if we could just touch base with Attorney Rollins, I think. I mean, unless the board wants to vote on it tonight, and Mr. Solari, the building inspector, because he's the one that's going to have to deal with it. So sure. But I, I, I'm uncomfortable. I, if if we had to vote tonight, I would vote no. Um, Rather you didn't vote tonight, then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I really have no problem doing this right. This is a this is a family legacy thing, so there's no there's no immediate rush on it. Let's just do it right. Yeah, I mean, if we if we endorse this tonight, we'd be actively putting the applicant in a, a condition where they'd have to either tear a building down, which understandably they don't want to tear their own structures that they're trying to keep down, or they'd presumably get in some conflict with the building inspector. And I don't know if there's like fines there or something, but we, we'd be actively harming the applicant by endorsing this tonight. So I don't think any, anybody wants. We actually have a set of plans that are called variance plans. They look exactly like the ones in front of you. Some of the wording is different. So um, I can get, get them to the building inspector or whoever needs them. Maybe that's the step we need. Maybe get the variance first. You know, then you do the, you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, and I don't know if that's the right way, but maybe, maybe we should. Uh, yeah, in terms of uh, directing Mr. Hart, uh, Hartree, um, I did see these variance plans, but when there was a discussion of a transfer of property, I, I felt that the proper way would be uh, this approval not required plans. Um, you know, understanding that it may need a variance is really kind of, you know, ultimately, it, I, I may in the future, I probably should in the future to have a discussion with uh, uh, the building inspector when it comes to certain plans. Um, because in cer certain situations, uh, and from my uh, uh, my professional experience, uh, I would receive a planning board plan, an ARNR like this, which you know didn't really have any issues, and the board would endorse. Um, but however, it could create an issue in the future with a, a different department that does that zoning enforcement. So, um, well, and then, and then the other thing too, Shane, is if he didn't get a, a variance, he's probably coming back with an eighty one X to unwind the form A, correct? Um, sure. It would depend on if he, if uh, they decided to have this plan stamped and brought to the clerk's office and recorded at the Registry of Deeds as well. Yeah, so I'd like to avoid all that, just to get it right, you know. Sure. I'm, 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 I think uh, 14 days is a good amount of time. Does the board want to act on it? Do we want to go forward with Checking in with Mr. Solari and Mr. Um, Attorney Rollins, or yeah, I'd rather well, wait. Yeah, I would right. too. For from my perspective, I don't remember anything like this coming before us before. And as much as uh, Mr. O'Brien is probably correct, I think we need a 
legal opinion as to what our responsibility is in terms of form A. Um, maybe we should be approving it as is, but I think I'd like to have that clarified before we vote. Shane, the, the, the letter that you sent us today in regards to form A's was zoning violations, right? Uh, I said that only to you, Pat. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I, so, so, so is that is that referencing raw land, though, or, or is that that the, is that referencing lots with? Because I, I could see, I could see, I could see raw land because you simply put it's not a buildable lot under zoning laws or something like that. Does that is there a, you know if if there are structures on it, is there a different threshold? Uh, I would say no. Um, I would say that the kind of the concept of that legal um, opinion um, is more so based on that a, the purview of the board is to just look at the their per, their own subdivision rules and regulations, um, making sure that there's some sort of transfer of property or if there's frontage on some sort of public street, and that all parties are um, in favor of it. Yeah. And that the endorsement of the board doesn't constitute any uh, uh, endorsement of our zoning bylaws and ordinances. So, so just thinking out loud, right? Let's say that I built a two family in residential D. You need 20,000 square feet of land, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I build the property and now I want to carve off 1,500. So now it's 18,500 and that's what a single family requires. We could allow that structure to become non conforming. Uh, you wouldn't allow it to be non-conforming. The app, the applicant would be creating their own hardship and a, a illegal, illegally non-conforming structure. And that's so we're doing the same thing in this instance. We're creating an, an illegal non-conforming structure. You guys aren't creating anything. You're just right. endorsing the plan. Right. The applicant is by putting a line there. That is correct. <clears throat> and then they would have to go to ZBA or remove them for both properties. Correct. All right, let's, if, if the applicants will answer, let's get some more input on it, I guess. If that's the will of the board. All right, so um, I'll just uh, I'll talk to Mr. Hartree and um, we'll have uh, come in. I'll, I'll create a form, Pat, for a continuation of an a and I, I think we have, a, I think we have an extension form right in the back of our rules and regs. All right, I'll have uh, Mr. Hartree sign that. All right. Are you okay with that, Mr. Hatchery? Whatever we need to do, sure. All right. I, I don't think we're trying to be difficult. I think we're just trying to make sure that we don't put us in a bind or you in a bind. You know what I, I mean? Honestly, it wouldn't be me. It would be my daughter, and I'd rather get it right now. So, yeah, let's do this right. Because <laughs> that's what's happening. That's who would have hit somebody down the road, you know? So. All right. So. So if somebody wants to make some sort of a motion either to endorse it to continue or have more discussion, please do so. Yeah, I'll make a motion to continue this to uh, September 21st at 6.30. By Mr. McDonald, do we have a second? I can second that. By Ms. Rojas? Any further discussion? I would just add that we, uh, in the opinion from Attorney Rollins in the meantime, yeah, we could send uh, have Mr. O'Brien send it over to him and get an opinion. Yeah, I'll have a conversation with Jason because I'll be reiterating his opinion in a letter. So I also get I completely get what Mr. O'Brien's saying. Uh, I think the upside of doing this is, you know, once we have like confirmation of what the consequences of this could be, then the applicant knows further. And if they still want to go ahead with it and it's our it's our duty to to approve it, then you know, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, just make sure everybody has all the relevant information. So they know any potential consequences that could come from it. If I may, what, what what's bothersome to me is that if we are required to approve this, we are potentially setting up a really difficult situation because if the zoning officer says they're not conforming, they've got to come down. And Mr. Bryan says, well, they're not going to come down, then we have a real bind. And we shouldn't we shouldn't be in that position at all. Yeah, just another thought, and the, the engineer's not here, but is it as simple as, you know, we note on the plans 
not a buildable lot to be raised, et cetera. Sure. Does it make sense to have a note for each garage saying either to be raised or have a ZBA uh, variance required? Uh, I, I would say that it wouldn't be in the board's purview to determine if structures should be taken down or not through ANR plans. Well, I'm saying, either, well, I'm just saying either to be raised or obtain a CBA permit, right? Um, like I said, I, I would say that it's not the board's purview to kind of the board, like I said, on the, well, on the thing I sent over to you earlier, Pat, typically planning boards place or ask for a certain language to be placed on plans saying that this is not constituting an opinion of the board of anything with zoning law or the zoning ordinances, which the applicant does provide on their plans, um, which is typical of a lot of plans that we do have. Um, so language like that, I think is is okay. Um, just stating that this, the board, not the board feels that this is a zoning violation, but the board endorse, does not endorse this plan based on anything in terms of our zoning bylaws or any opinions on our zoning bylaws. Uh, what uh, just one more thing I, I would also probably ask or recommend Mr. Hartree um, um, if their surveyors could also potentially um, create a solution also as well as this or if there's a solution um, we can't essentially design some of these uh, plans however they may sh or should have the expertise in terms of understanding our zoning ordinances as to not place you in a bind as well as the board in a bind. Um, so I don't know if Thompson do know, Farland. Do we know, do we know how long that structure has been there? Which one? The Quonset hut? Correct. It was, built, it was built in the seventies. And the other one was built in the fifties. My dad built the wooden. So the seventies was after subdivision control law, correct? Uh, subdivision control law was before the 70s, I believe. Um, so, I'd have so, to check so our zoning. So the, this, this decision, this Smalley decision that I just looked up, mm -hmm. said approval of the subdivision control law was not required. The plan showed the division of a tract of land into two lots, which were two existing buildings, residents and a bar. The bar and the residents were standing when the subdivision control law went into effect in Howitch. One lot. So I still don't think we can sign it, but. Like I said, I can, uh, we can talk to Jason in terms of all things A&R law. I'll have a good hearty conversation with him. Um, but uh, I, I just would recommend that the applicant also go back to their surveyor and engineer and maybe ask them to create a more conforming plan if possible. And he may agree with us if he did a ZBA. I don't see any other option um, than, you know, cutting them down the middle, uh, cutting real close to one of them. And then you only have one that might be a variance, but um, there's really no other option than to get that onto 681 Plymouth Street to become part of that property. You know. All right. Um, so we have a motion and a second to continue it. We've had enough discussion on it, I believe, unless there's anything else. So I'll take the roll. Um, Mr. Jamian? Yes. Mr. Geller? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Ms. Ross? Yes. And I'm a yes. So we continued it until next meeting. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Shane, we'll talk to you. Thank you very Good much. Thing. Talk to you tomorrow or soon. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, Shane, next item up, we have CPC representative under board business. That is correct. Has anybody decided, I, I said I'd do it, unless somebody else wants to do it. I, I'll do it just to make sure it's filled and we're represented. Um, I can do it until somebody wants to do it. I can do it, so if, if somebody wants to do it, step forward, if not, I'll, I'll fill the seat. I'll point to the time slot just doesn't work for me. Otherwise, I'd love to. If that changes in the future, I'll let you know. Yeah. 
All right, so if somebody wants to make a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion to appoint Mr. Driscoll, our representative. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Jimmy, just for discussion. So, you know, if in the future, if anybody has an interest, I'm happy to, to step aside, but just so we're represented now, I know Mr. Geller had some time restraints and had to step down, so I'll fill the seat um, and we'll go from there. So any further discussion? If, if, if I'm able to in the future, I'll, I'll be happy to, uh, to take that on. But, Thank uh, you. Right now, it's, yeah. uh, All right, so if there's no further discussion, let's take the roll, Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. Mr. Jimmy? Yes. Mr. Gill? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I guess I mean, yes. Um, next up, we have um, planning board minutes for 7 6 22. Do we have a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make the motion to approve the minutes. Motion by Mr. Jemmy. Do we have a second? I can second that. By Ms. Rojas. Any discussion on the minutes of 7 6? I think they're all. Um, Ms. Rojas? Yes. Mr. Jemmy? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Geller? Yes. Let me ask. Um, planning Board Subdivision Rules and Regulations Fall 2022 update for Shane. This is yours. I'll let you take it. Sure thing. All right. So it's been a couple of years since uh, I think the board's done a deep dive into the subdivision rules and regs. Um, I myself being new and uh, our town engineer. Uh, Greg Tansy being new. And so I, I felt that I should let the board know if the board feels comfortable with uh, myself going through our current subdivision rules and regs uh, and look at, you know, create a red line version and create some updates that are more um, up to date on some certain things that we may be uh, wanting to see changed. Uh, I think one of the big ones um, that we've discussed in prior time um, or actually two of them was, uh, I guess, their definition of substantial completion in terms of subdivisions, as well as types of street trees um, for a subdivision. So um, I just wanna let the board know that I'm kind of uh, diving into our current regs. Um, and if the board has any opinions or comments, um, I'm happy to accept them and I'll be presenting them at some point, um, fall, winter time, if the board would like to place it on a meeting. So Shane, are you looking for us just to give you the go ahead to go start redlining it? Or do you, are you to the point where you want us to schedule a meeting? Uh, this is just my, this is my okay by the board to go ahead and do it. You guys may feel that the subdivision rules and regs look great, um, but I want your blessing and essentially the ability to start looking it over and add my red lines. Board no, I'm doing a review either way, you know, might as well take a look. Sure thing. No harm in doing it, more positives than negatives. I right, would go ahead and do it. Any other comments? Shane, maybe when you do things, I know there's been a big push for street trees and I actually, why I'm sitting here, just got an email from a resident asking about native species to be, to be, only there's the only types of street trees believe it or not <clears throat> timing is good so maybe we could uh, there should be a tree board or a tree committee soon maybe we should loop them in so. yeah I, I would i would just state that uh, when we do amend subdivision rules and regulations we are looking solely for subdivisions so when we're dealing with retreat lots or site plan reviews or special permits Right. I, I would say that there needs to be recommendations and changes through our zoning ordinance process um, in terms of um, those changes. If I could add uh, at this point, uh, sort of fits in. Um, I and a couple of people are meeting with the uh, town manager next week uh, to go over the proposed permanent tree board. Uh, we, we have, uh, he has the recommendations that we came that we did this summer. And uh, part of that will be with regard to types of trees that are planted in town. 
And so once the, uh, assuming that the town manager um, is not negative to the proposal, at some point in the next month or two, we should have a permanent tree board approved by the council. And uh, hopefully that will work in conjunction with the other boards in terms of planting the right trees and uh, making sure that the trees we do plant are taken care of. Okay, so I mean, I'd echo the other two comments. I think it makes sense to have you do a thorough review of what we have and maybe give us ideas and best practices and have a meeting where we can decide what we want to change and not change. Yeah. Yeah, and as part of that too, because I know our applications are tied with our subdivision rules and regs, and we're in this process of um, kind of transitioning to an online permitting application. You may have seen some of our uh, online permits through the application process. Uh, the most recent ANR um, did one online. Um, so kind of transitioning some of our applications to uh, this online version, as well as kind of modifying a couple of those applications is kind of an ongoing process. So I just want to make sure everything's uh, up to date with those as well. When was the last amendment? Was it 2018? Okay. And prior to that, it was 2012, I think, right? Uh, I believe so. There's been some, I believe, some gaps in between. With so the you... uh, the online application, oh, sorry, Pat, go ahead. No, go ahead. Just a question about the online application system. Is that, are they going to transfer to like an exclusively online model or are people still going to be able to do it, uh, you know, like... We're hoping, we're hoping that it's going to be totally exclusive online. We do have the software um, in front of the building department to allow. We use currently use Permitize for our building applications, and we're hoping to use our, um, our planning board applications, our ZBA applications, our site plan special permit applications, all through um, this software as well, because it does have the capabilities. And it, it's nice to be able to um, link everything together and you know, communicate with the other departments. And Shane, I'm looking at our subdivision rules and regs. There is a request for extension of time in there, but it says for approval of a subdivision plan described below. So we'd have to. We can add some things that we have missing. I would uh, like go cross that out for an hour or something. So. Yeah, because we've also had, uh, um, I think we've had discussion when it came to like Green Place and previous other places of what what the definition of substantial completion of a subdivision is, is it when they get their road accepted? Is it when the, uh, you know, all the bond monies are returned or is it when the work's actually uh, complete? I think we had that discussion too in terms of Scotland Boulevard. Correct. So anything that we can nail out and define and just kind of figure some problem children that may have been issues in the past, especially with like ANR plans as well. We can, you know, in the basis in, you know, what we can require on ANR plans that's allowed by law, we can add some language in terms of that too, or, you know, that the building inspector, you know, gives a review or a comment letter on it. Okay. Yeah, our, our only extension is there's a um, planning board form H request for extension of time for subdivisions and special permits. Well, I can I can I can say to the board right now that uh, this this A and R has not been stamped in by the clerk's office, so there is no current time frame based on MGL at this time. All right. Um, do you want to vote, or is that feedback good enough for you to go? I feedback's fine. We don't have to do roll call. Are there any board or committee reports? Ray, you kind of gave you a report already. Yeah, I did. I'm all set. Is there a planner's report? You basically wrapped that into your... Yeah, one more thing. I think we're going to have a busy September 21st meeting. Um, I just want to note that we only have one meeting in October, unless there's a necessity to have a special meeting. Um, what do we have on for September 21st? What's yes. that? We it's have really uh, we have some bond reduction requests. We have um, lot release requests. Um, potentially two ten Broad Street. We have the A and R, um, but let me, I don't have a agenda set yet. 
um, but we do have substantially more items on the next meeting than we did last meeting. No new special permits, no new, new uh, site plans at this time, but um, we shall see. But Where some other releases being requested. What's that? Where are the lot releases being requested? Um, I believe it is a lot release issue that came up in March of 2021 regarding um, from the open space. Yeah, but I don't I don't have the uh, I don't have a confirmation. That wasn't a lot release. That was a cut release of covenant, right? That's correct. Um, but that should be. I, I need to confirm with their uh, the applicant and their attorney um, if they want to be because they intended on being at today's meeting, but they had a conflict. Do we, have an, do we have a legal opinion on that one? Because that's where I'm... I did have a conversation with the attorney Rollins. Okay. And you'll put that in writing for the board? I will. Okay. All right. All right. If we don't have anything else, is there a motion to adjourn? I'd just like to make a comment that I apologize to all of you. Yeah, I've been yawning throughout this, and I, I it's not that I'm. <laughs> totally bored by what's been saying, but I have terrible allergies and they just make me very sleepy. So hopefully I will be more alert at the next meeting. And uh, I apologize if you think I'm just bored the hell by this, this meeting. I, I feel, I feel you right. Uh, all day. It's, it's the issues of, I still have my, all the ACs in the windows and all that cool air and everything's coming in with them. It's still terrible. So I, I. You fired, right? I'll yawn too. That's a real one. Oh God, take a pill and get over it. Will you? It doesn't work. <laughs> when we're up for our raises next year, you know, we'll remember this. All right. Um, any other comments? If there's no other comments, we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. After Ray says that, then my eyes are starting to water. It must be my uh, allergies, too. Oh, my God. People. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do we have a motion to adjourn? Was that Mr. Gallo? Yes, it was. So moved. Do we I'll second. Is that Mr. McDonald? Yep. Any discussion? Mr. Ross? Yes. Mr. Jamin? Yes. Mr. Gallo? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Oh, yes. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Shane. Good night, everyone. Have a good one.